What's up, boys? Welcome back to another video. Today, it's all about uh, this gray thing. Mostly about everything I hate about it, because I couldn't think of many things I like about it. So I figured I'd, I'd tell you not to buy it, but to buy it at the same time. If you're gonna buy it, buy it from me. It's for sale. It's not, but it can be if you want it. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is, well, I mean, obviously everything looks good. Everything's the same. It was detailed on, what's today's Thursday. I got it detailed on Monday, picked it up Monday evening, and then it's rained all week. I originally was gonna film this video on Monday. I literally picked it up from detailing and it was raining. So much for that detail, but it, it needed it. The wheels look so much shinier than they were before. Actually, one of the things on the list, I don't know, it was about two months ago, uh, I started noticing this little like kind of carving of a ring into the whole, ooh, those, those are still hot. I didn't think those would be hot still. Into the rotor. So for some reason, it was carving this little ring around the whole thing. And I'm like, that's odd. Don't know what that is. Well, the few times it got brought in for oil changes and the tire rotation, they never said anything about it. So I thought that was one thing that was interesting. Then it got worse and worse and worse. Then finally, I started hearing it. You could hear it like carving. Like you could hear the two metals grinding together. And finally, I was like, you know what? All right, I'm tired of waiting for you guys to tell me that it's messed up because you're the ones that are in there taking it all apart. How about I tell you to fix what's wrong? So what it ended up being was the brakes were basically just staying a smidge too closed and it wasn't releasing all the way. So it ended up carving down that brake pad enough and unevenly, may I add, to where the little clips in the brake, those are all metal and they started rubbing around the outside of it and caused it to, well, one, it didn't change the ride at all. Like it, you didn't feel it, you didn't notice it. It still broke the same amount. Like it's not like I was almost running into people cause I couldn't brake. It still was working fine, but it was just the fact that it shouldn't sound like that. Like I'd go to a drive through and the thing just, it sounds like I'm scraping down the side of their building. Like that's no good. That's one of the things that I've had little issues with with this truck. I don't understand what it is. Maybe it's just the little things that it's just random. I don't think that's all Raptors in general. I mean, one of the other things that, I mean, this isn't a problem, but this little, there's supposed to be a lens cap on this light, such as over here, there's this right here. And they go all four corners of the truck, but for some reason I was just washing it one day and that one fell off. It could be because it's a 2019, I don't know. I mean, obviously things happen, things get old, things fall apart. I don't think 2019 is that old necessarily, but it's one of those things. So if you want, we can come on around the backside here. And the backside, the old booty, is we got the tailgate. The tailgate's fun. As you guys can see, there's markings right here on the tailgate. And I don't know if I was filming this part a few months ago when me and Augie were moving all of the, I think it was the day of the fish tank we were moving. Uh, we, were, we picked up the trailer and we run to the house. Well, by the time we got the trailer to the house, we get there and I'm like, Augie, did you put the tailgate down? He's like, no. I'm like, interesting, okay. Well, the tailgate had a mind of its own, decided to just open as we were driving, landed right under the trailer jack, which caused all of these markings here. I took the color matched paint and kind of just touched it up instead of having like all these silver lines going everywhere. So it looks a little bit better from a distance. As you get closer up, you can tell it is all messed up. And I went to Ford. They said, oh yeah, the tailgate's on a recall. We'll fix that for you. I said, okay, well, what about the part that's all basically destroyed and scratched? And they go, oh yeah, uh, we can't do nothing about that. I go, okay, sick. So your faulty product fell onto my trailer and then you guys won't fix that? They're like, no. Nah. I go, okay, sounds good. I said, well, can you at least fix the tailgate? He's like, yeah, of course. Well, they didn't do that either. I can open it right now. Look at that. You can open it. You can close it. That part's fine. It's the moment you turn the truck on, the tailgate will not open. So let's go turn on the truck and show you guys what I'm talking about. Cause you guys probably think I'm crazy. I swear I'm not crazy. So let's go over here and let me, uh... there we go. Start her up and then we'll go here. I will go lock the truck. It'll unlock itself. There we go. And I'm gonna walk around back. Watch it'll open this time. Look at that. I'm pushing the button. Push it, Augie, you wanna try? Please, please, prove me I'm wrong. Oh, weird. Weird how that works, huh? Ford killed it with that tailgate. So it had a recall. They still didn't fix it. I called the dealership and they go, um, well, your guy's not in right now. We'll get back to you. Well, I've now called four times. The guy's not getting back to me. Oh, look at that. I shut the truck off, walked over here and Augie opened up the tailgate. This is so stupid. I don't get it. Now that the truck's totally off, it works totally fine. And I guarantee you, I can walk back over here, or here, look. I'll lock the truck, it's totally, we're locked. Now watch, tailgate locks, beautiful. Come over here, enter in the code. Now look, door is unlocked, this door is unlocked, tailgate unlocks. Tailgate works perfectly fine if the truck's off. But there's times where, hey, you run by Home Depot, you get some two by fours, 
you pull on up to load them. Oh, let, hold on a second. Let me just turn off the truck in my 117 degrees outside. Let it cook me back up just to open it up. Like what kind of, that's a horrible design. And Ford won't take any responsibility for that. So one, that's a huge negative point to Ford. Don't understand what the deal is. On top of that, uh, well, really, that's, that's the only issue on the outside that I can think of right now in this very moment. The other thing that's odd that they won't fix, they just told me, hey, don't use it, is the sunroof that you pay extra to get. There's a little, like, obviously there's a cover on it. And if you want to use the cover, you got to use these buttons over here, right here, up there. So one of those buttons and it will roll back the cover and then it's seamless. You don't see the cover anymore. It hides, it all rolls up behind that little, whatever you want to call it, up under there. But I hope you don't want it closed because once you open it, there's a very good chance it won't close back up because whatever the motor is that they used in this, it binds itself up on the track somehow and then it just kills the motor and then it's just stuck. Then you have to get a whole entire new sunroof, not just the little motor or whatever, you have to get the whole thing redone. So that means they have to take out the entire roof, the whole liner of the car just to fix that. And I said, okay, well, what happens if it gets stuck? They go, well, it's not a warranty part. It's just something that goes wrong a lot, but we don't warranty it and there's no recalls for it. So you're gonna have to pay for it. I said, well, how much is it? They're like, oh, it's like five grand. I go, what? Uh, I'm okay. So I don't ever use the sunroof. To be fair, I don't like a sunroof anyway. I'm not really that kind of person. I just want to look out my windshield and my side windows. I don't really care to be the girl on prom going out the roof. You know, that's not really my style. That's Augie's style. He likes to be that girl, but you know, not really for me. So that's another negative point to Ford. Everything else though on the inside kind of works pretty good. We'll go around back here. Sometimes you gotta, well here, we'll show you guys the seat. You pull that little lever, you lift it up. We got straps, a few other things under here. And as of right now, it locks in. There is some times where I will put this up because I have things back here and all of a sudden you'll be driving and you just hear, and I go, what I just hit. It happened the other day and Augie, what'd you say? What was that or something? Yeah, because the thing just slammed shut. We're like, what is that? So sometimes it doesn't always lock and stay up. That happened in my old Platinum, which was a 2019 as well. So maybe 2019 was a bad year for Ford. Definitely wouldn't buy any 2020 cars because God knows how those got made. This year, eh, maybe they're getting better. 2018s, I've heard no issues with. So I don't know. I don't know if I, I just, I got the lemon or what, but I've also heard some other horror stories about a buddy of mine who lives down south who had a Raptor it was a 2018, so basically the same technology that's in this one, but just made the year before. And his ended up like the blinkers wouldn't work. Like he had some weird stuff going on. So I think he had a lemon. I don't think, I wouldn't call this one a lemon. It still runs, it drives. I'm just being picky. I think I have a fair excuse to be picky for how much I paid for it. Everything should work, just saying. But if you come on inside, we're gonna go ahead. Let's jump up here. Let's start this baby up. Let's give her the old run here. Oh, if you guys see the crack in the seat right here, that's not, Ford, I, I can't blame them. I have aftermarket seat covers on these that look just like the regular ones that you are on the seat. And uh, it's just cracking right here. So I just have to order a new bottom piece and then that'll be good as new. I just want to point that out. Um, also, same thing here around this red stripe here on the steering wheel. As you can see, it's starting to kind of come apart. I think that's just from wear and tear being old. I drive generally with my hand up here, so I'm constantly rubbing on it. So I assume that's part of it. Oh, look at this, connected to Ty's iPhone. This was something I wanted to point out to you guys. Look at this, I go to source, where's my phone? Tell me where it's at. You go here, and then you hit the home button, and oh, come on, it's my day. Oh, look, phone's right there. So, uh, okay, 911 assist, disabled, rip, that's okay. But look, you gotta go here, then you have to go to source, then you gotta hit Bluetooth. Oh, then it tells you 12 things about your manual. Then you gotta hit yes. Then I have to go to my phone, then hit connect, and then I wait. Finally, the little, what, what's that called? The music note? Yeah. What's the name for it, though? Isn't there a name for it? Or is it just music note? A note, yeah. Oh, music. never mind. And then I have to hit Ty's iPhone. Finally, I now can listen to my music. That's every time. That's every single time I start the truck up. It remembers my phone, so if I want to call somebody, but it's supposed to be to where the infotainment grabs the actual media as well, not just the phone. So that's another thing. I can nitpick about it, yes. Do I really care? Not that much. It's kind of annoying. I'm used to it now, so I don't really think of it, but that's just something else that I can tick off the list of just, it should work. I, I don't see why it doesn't or what the issues are, but that's one of the things. Uh, now that the truck is on, there's this fancy thing. If you go up under it, uh, Augie, I'll let you go ahead and hit the gas pedal. That uh, Ford told me the sound of this truck is stock. So go ahead, let's take a listen. So, I don't know how well the camera picks this up, 
but it sounds like someone's in there with like a can of beans or a can of corn and they just poured it in there and it's just down there rattling it all up. I don't know what is that. They told me the firewall of the motor is made out of, I believe they use the word tin, so it has a tin sound. I said, okay, well you pull a brand new car around and you start it next to mine, I guarantee you mine rattles more than that one. I said, so how about you guys fix that? They also have a recall on it that they called an engine shutter that they claimed is not that. So this thing just rattles for nothing. I don't know what it is. It has nothing to do with any of the aftermarket stuff that was put on this truck because I had all that looked over. So that's just another thing. I don't know why it does it. My 2019 did it, or the, the Platinum I had before this, I had a white Platinum for those of you guys who remember, and it did the same thing. Had that rattle, I took it in once I had that recall, and the rattle went away. I sold that truck with not a single sound other than the motor came out of it. This thing sounds like it's falling apart. Like it sounds like there's a bolt loose, I don't know. It makes no sense. I don't know what causes that. But now that the vehicle is on, so this truck comes with adaptive cruise control. As you guys can see in there at the very bottom, oh, it just went away. It has adaptive cruise control. It shoots a radar in front of the vehicle and it reads uh, like the traffic in front of you. Oh, look at that. Look what Augie found. Look at that. You can either set it to adaptive or normal. So regular normal cruise control, it just sets the speed, doesn't do anything else. Adaptive allows it to read the traffic in front of it, obviously not behind you, but in front of you. So what it does is if the car in front of you slows down, the truck will automatically slow down for you. Or if somebody cuts off, wh whatever it may be. So what this truck does is the moment somebody pulls in front of you, they could be 50 yards in front of me. They could be over where that white Nissan is. This truck reads it and decides I'm gonna slam on the brakes going 80 on the highway. So I will be going from 80 to slam and then go 60 and then have to stare at my mirrors to hope I don't get rear-ended by big semi man coming up 90 mile an hour behind me. So that's one of the things that, I don't know if that's a new technology to this year, it could be, because my 2019 did the same thing. It also has this uh, brake assist to where if anything like is comes before you, oh look, here, look, Augie's killing it right now. He's got the pre-collision, look at that. It tells you what it is, the active braking, pre-collision on. All of this stuff, keep in mind, I can turn it off 100%. I didn't pay all this money for a vehicle and then not use half the features. That seems kind of, that just defeats the whole point of having the feature. Like then I would have not bought a Raptor, I would have bought the regular XLT, you know, if I didn't want all the cool stuff. Well, no, you want the cool stuff. So yes, can I turn it off? Yes. But there was the other day where I'm at a red light, the light goes green, nobody moves, of course, then it goes red. Well then the truck, I'm just slowly creeping forward. Like I just let off the brake. So I'm going less than five mile an hour. All of a sudden the truck just decides I'm gonna hit something in front of me. The car in front of me is like five, 10 yards in front. It just slammed on the brakes. It literally made like a grinding sound. It slammed on the brakes so hard. I don't know what it did, but it sounded like somebody like squealed a pig. I don't know. It was bad. It was a er, real hard and everything, like all four wheels just locked up, boom, stop. And the, I could feel the brake pedal fall from underneath my feet. So that was a little weird. Um, I don't know if that's normal. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be, but that was just odd. I've never seen that before. I've been in other vehicles that have it, that aren't Ford products, and they're really smooth. There's no issues with that. I mean, Tesla, great example. That thing can drive itself from Miami to New York and have nobody in the front seat. I don't understand why we, the technology's there, just it's not done very well in these years. I don't know what the deal is, but that's just my personal experience. So. With all that mumble of mess of everything I don't like about this truck, I promise you I don't hate it necessarily. I do like it. I do still have future plans for the truck. Like obviously there's still a few things that I want to get done on it and do to it in the future. But with that said, I might as well tell you guys the things I actually do like about it and that I think are very worth the money. One of the things being, look how comfy Augie look. He's chilling right now. Got the seat cooler on too. Oh, you got the old ass blaster going? Nice. So all you got the old, or, oh, you had the cooler on. I almost said the heated seat on. Oh, that would have been, that would have been a hot booty. Speaking of heated seats, one of the cool things that comes with the Raptors is, uh, and I think the Platinums as well, is they have heated rear seats. So that's cool. It's just this one and that one. Um, the seat belts are kind of unique too. Augie just pointed that out. As you guys can see, they got a funny little buckle. That's because there is an airbag built into the seat or into the belt itself or whatever you want to call it. So yes, it obviously has an airbag that will explode from up top here, but there's nothing in front of you like you would if you're in the driver's seat. You either have the dash that blows up into your face or the steering wheel. Well, this one, it just blows up right here on your chest and will prevent you from ideally slamming your face into the back of me and then Augie peek around the corner at you and be like, everybody okay? Kind of unique. I've not seen that in any other like truck uh, other than this one that I've seen. Maybe the TRX has one. I've never driven a TRX. So I, I'm not saying that Ford sucks. 
this company's better, blah, blah, blah. I'm just throwing it out there. It's all personal experience, okay? As I mentioned earlier, I talked about doing some future plans with this truck. One of those things being these little fender gills. Uh, these are going to be either painted, if they can paint over this. It's like a, I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's like a weird plasticky material, but it's not smooth. So that's the problem. Same thing with these little front louver pieces or whatever you want to call that hood vent. Those are all going to be painted the same color as the truck. They also do carbon ones. If I want to do carbon fiber, that's kind of a cool idea, but there's nothing else that's carbon fiber on the outside. So I figured I might as well just paint match it because everything else is paint matched to it. Um, but other than that, for the outside, I think it's going to be pretty much done for now. I mean, obviously there's going to be times where this stuff is going to need to get repainted and little things like that. But for big full customization, I don't think there's going to be anything else other than those front pieces. And then maybe just maybe I will do the tailgate as well. As you guys can see, it's the same material. This is not smooth painted like this. Um, the camera sometimes will make this and this look like the same color. It's not. This is how every Raptor tailgate will come. I never did anything to the tailgate itself other than drop it on a trailer hitch. Classic. So that is something that I want to look at in the future. Same thing with the taillights. We're going to black those things out or either do them color, do painted taillights so they're color matched with clear lenses. That is an option as well. I did that with my headlights on my old 350 that I had back in high school. So that is an option as well. I may or may not keep these running boards. I'm, not, I'm indifferent about them. I think they look cool. They fit the look of it being an off-road vehicle, like a Raptor theme. But I also think that uh, I just don't use the truck for that. I have taken it in little trails and different stuff like that. But my biggest worry is something breaking and then it costing like five grand to fix it. I don't really want to spend all that money on something that I could have prevented from breaking. Maybe one day we will take this thing and actually use it for what it's worth. Uh, when that time comes, I don't know. But I just want to throw those few little things out to you guys. If you guys have any other ideas on what you want or what you think would be cool uh, for customization, leave it in the comments down below. Oh, one of the other things I remembered is obviously I mentioned the steering wheel and the problems it's had. Uh, we have a guy in town who can actually reupholster this and then all of this silver in here can be carbon fiber to match the carbon fiber accents on the shifter as well as the doors here. So that is an option as well that I think I'm going to do because eventually it's going to need to get reupholstered anyway. So I might as well just do that. It won't be much more to throw on top of it. Um, this thing handles and drives super, super well. I cannot complain about that. The thing is awesome. I love driving it. It is super smooth. You don't feel any really any bumps. Like when you're on the highway, it's just sitting there floating like a Cadillac. It's great. I just spit on you guys, by the way. You're welcome. It has a tuner in it, so it is already programmed to go. I think I, I, I wish I had the numbers. If you guys want, I'll take this thing, get it dynoed. Um, I need to take it back to the tune guy anyway, because when I had it at Ford and they were fixing the tailgate, they had to do something in like the truck's computer because I guess it's a, it's a computer thing, obviously, to unlock and lock the tailgate because it's all electronic now. So with that, I told them how to properly untune the vehicle so they can unplug it and not ruin anything. Well, they didn't listen to me. They instead called me after they did it, said, hey, can we remove the tune on the truck? I said, yes, this is how you do it. They go, oh, well, we already did it. We just wanted to make sure just in case you wanted us to revert it they can't revert it. They don't have the key to get into it to revert it. So that's something that was fun. So right now the truck is driving on its stock power. Uh, I can't even use the tuner that I put into it because they unprogrammed it to then not fix it. Now I have to pay to go get it fixed. So that was cool. But while I'm there, if you guys want, I'll get it dynoed. I can make that a video. I don't know how many car guys we got on the channel or truck guys, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I, I enjoy vehicles as much as the next guy. So hey, if you guys want more videos like that, I will gladly do some. Other than that, I think that is about it for you boys. I, I, this video is kind of random. Uh, I just wanted to throw it out there because I've had the truck just over a year now. And uh, yeah, I think I've had plenty of time behind the seat to uh, really tell you guys what's good and what's bad about this thing. And uh, maybe if we're lucky, I'll trade it in and get you guys something else fun for me to do. I don't know. Not, not too sure yet. I do like the new Tacomas coming out. So we're waiting to see those and then we'll decide what we want to do with this truck uh, when that time comes. I don't know. But yeah. So yeah, bye.